Yesterday, we unboxed the LG G2, the global version of the company's latest Android flagship. And today, we just received carrier variants of that same device, one from Verizon Wireless and the other from AT&T. We're going to do a little double unboxing here, taking both phones out of their boxes and seeing what changes the carriers have made to the presentation of this device. I'm Michael Fisher. This is Pocket Now. This is your double unboxing of the LG G2 for Verizon Wireless and AT&T. Okay, now just to provide some context, we have brought back our box from yesterday. This is the, where is it? This is the original box that we unboxed yesterday with this kind of interesting little angular cut. It's almost an overbite, but nothing else on this, um, this basically unbranded box, save for the LG logo and the uh, G2 branding. You can see that unboxing yesterday. That leaves us with the two carrier versions here. AT&T Verizon Wireless will go by size. Verizon Wireless is still the largest carrier in the United States. Put the AT&T box aside for now, just to show you though, there is a significant size difference. It looks like Verizon's shelf space in their retail stores is at a premium maybe, we don't know. But we slide this out of its uh, sleeve here. This is definitely a, a premium presentation. I'm not sure how y'all are feeling about this um, splatter paint job. I kind of dig it, but we always like to see this sleeve on the outside. It just adds another layer to the experience and let's have a look. and see what's included in the box if Verizon will tell us and if we can get focused. There that is. Doesn't look like we're gonna see any headphones in here. Unless I'm really missing something. Let's see. Let's stop reading things and let's just check it out. Nothing else on the outside of the box except barcodes, which you do not need to see, friends. There we go. Here's the LG G2 for Verizon Wireless. A uh, different screen protector than we saw yesterday. Let me get a little wider angle here. We have a 4G LTE SIM pre-installed over there. A little call out for that. We'll call out for the headphone jack and the USB port. The Verizon branding is very, very, very plain on this unit. Uh, not quite as ostentatious as we've seen on other phones. This is the same color. Let's see if we can, uh, oh yeah, and then we have some, oh, oh, customized volume keys. Let's check that out. Let's put these side by side. So yeah, normally we do packaging first, but this volume key difference is so uh, is so striking and has gotten me so uh, maybe unreasonably excited that I wanted to check that out. So on the global edition here, you can see the keys are big. They are the keys we remember seeing in the New York City event. I mean, they're, they're big. There's plenty of room for a finger there with a little raised power standby in the center with a ring light around it. Now these, and they're plastic. These would appear to be, maybe they're still plastic. They don't quite feel like metal, but they look like they're their detailed, uh, you know, their detail suggests that they're metal, maybe. Also, you'll notice the ring around the camera has that uh, kind of radial pattern there, similar to the one we saw on the earbuds from, from yesterday, that almost moiré finish that's in blue. Interesting to see from Verizon, which normally focuses on red, but maybe they don't want to confuse this with the droid line. And finally, just a wide look at the detailing on the bodies of this unit. This is more like a uh, denim finish, kind of a, a very, very subtle stripe striped pattern, whereas Verizon has gone with a finish that is more uh, honeycomb. It looks stippled, it looks textured, but it is not. And then of course there's the Verizon 4G LTE logos. And since we are big fans of removing plastic, let's go ahead and do that. Here we are, and quiet please. Hmm, not much stickiness on that one, but a beautiful unblemished display. And around back we have a handy pull tab for this. Taking that plastic off there, we can really see that honeycomb texture on this black variant of the Verizon LG G2. Let's see what the splash screen from the carrier has in store for us. Very, very fast boot as we saw yesterday. Same wallpaper. Let's take a quick look at the software here. We'll bring the angle back out. Go ahead and unlock. And we'll move our microphone back so maybe you can hear me a bit better. Immediately we see the custom Verizon uh, visual voicemail icon there. Up into applications. Let's see if we can spot some bloatware. There's the VZW accessories uh, shopping cart there. Some Amazon stuff pre-installed. What else we got? Oh, wow, there's a lot of Amazon stuff pre-installed. The whole Amazon suite. Maybe this is usual. I don't review a lot of Verizon wireless devices, so forgive me if this is news to me. Mobile hotspot. My Verizon mobile. Slacker. NFL mobile. Boy, no shortage of um, bloat on this device. 
There's your VZ Navigator, VZ Security, Verizon Tones. Wow, just a whole lot of stuff going on on here. Let's see if anything is preloaded on the screens. You know, this layout is not all that different with the exception of that big Amazon widget. This layout is not all that different than the one we saw on our global unlocked unit uh, yesterday. So at least there are some, some kudos to be given for that. Let's see if Verizon has done their usual action. No, they haven't. Oh, very excellent. So the Wi-Fi network's available notification is actually standard. I expected Verizon to have taken out their uh, their Wi-Fi toggle from the notification thing, which they usually do, but that's back, so that's nice. And does it work? It does indeed work. That's wonderful. Other differences are sure to come out uh, during our comparison. We'll be comparing this device with the Galaxy S4 next week, uh, also on Verizon. But before we send it away, let's see what's in the box and see if we were right, or see if the box was right, about that lack of headphones. With the Verizon, oh yeah. So there's a get to know your phone, and then all we have is a power adapter and a USB cable. Those awesome headphones from yesterday, which are awesome, spoiler alert, they're really cool, uh, are not included. So maybe that explains the smaller box. I don't think it was worth the trade-off. It's always nice to have extra accessories in the box, and it's so irritating when uh, when they are eliminated, particularly when they're on one version, not the other. Let's see how the AT&T version holds up. Now, we've had to use a much wider angle on the AT&T box because it is significantly larger, and just like any other modern AT&T box, this... Uh, this, well, there's just no getting around it. These are these are pretty ugly boxes. I really want AT&T to work on their presentation. But you know what? I say that every time, and nothing ever changes. So that's okay. We can move on from this and uh, and move on with our lives and check out the device. Whew. All right. Well, this is yuck. Okay. This protects the phone probably better than just sitting naked in the box. So I'm not going to come down on AT&T uh, too hard for this. Let's pop the phone out and let's keep the order the same. Just took it out of frame for a second to take off the IMEI and SIM label. And here is the device. This is a much, much closer approximation of the global unlocked unit in terms of fit and finish. The buttons appear to be the same. The camera uh, decoration, at least, still appears to be the same. I'm gonna put the old unit aside. Oh, it looks like they've changed up the branding a bit, actually. So down here you can see these, uh, there's the LG logo on the Global Unlocked one on my right hand. The AT&T one has removed that and just put G2 down below. So interesting. It's interesting to check out these little minor things. I know we're splitting hairs here, folks, but this is the kind of stuff that carriers do. Carriers decide they want to, you know, change the look and feel of a device in the most minute way. And, uh, you know, they can do that. LG did say that there were going to be variations on these. So it uh, shouldn't come as any surprise to us. I think we've gotten enough on the... Uh, on the close sound effect on there, and I'll forget to put the mic back, so let's just peel this right off. Off that comes, that's very nice. It can wait, by the way, texting and driving is not a fun time, because you could get dead. Okay, so once again on the back, we've got the global unit on the right-hand side, the AT&T unit on the left. Almost no discernible changes, except for that branding we mentioned before, and the AT&T Death Star logo on the AT&T unit. Flip them around to the front, there is no such carrier branding. On the front, these are completely identical aesthetically speaking. Let's go ahead and power on the uh, AT&T unit here. Put the global one off to the side. Should get a nice little buzz there. There's our LG splash screen. And let's see if we get the uh, typical AT&T spinning globe animation, which we should. There's the notification LED doing its cycle test. There's AT&T's spinning globe. And we are immediately prompted to set up the device with AT&T's ready to go service, which they are uh, pushing and I'm gonna go ahead and remind later on that. Yes, I would like to exit ready to go. Thank you, thank you, yes, I, I would like to do that. So it's interesting that the Verizon device didn't prompt us to do any of that. Uh, and here's our landing screen. No bloatware on the front page. It looks like, well, except for what is this voice mate? I'm not familiar with this. Uh, this must be an LG created app. I'm not sure if this was on the global one, but it certainly wasn't called out front and center. We'll check that out later. Nothing on the left. Featured apps from AT&T right there. There's Drive Mode, their big automotive push. Uh, and here's a whole folder. So AT&T has taken pains to organize all their bloatware into one area for us. Stop it, Drive Mode. I don't want to use you right now. There it is. There's all the stuff that you will either find useful or find gross. Let's hop into the app launcher, see what we got here. Again, the Amazon Suite is preloaded. Or not the Suite, it looks like just Amazon Kindle app is preloaded. And here's all of our AT&T stuff. The entire first two rows, almost, uh, is AT&T bloat. 
if that's what you want to call it. And we have a link to what looks like a little spammy games icon here. What's the deal here? And we got a prompt to use slide aside. That didn't happen on the global version. We did not immediately get prompted to, uh, to start using slide aside. So that's interesting. Yes, I'm fine with games using oh, Wild Tangent Games. So this is a game catalog that uh, it's, you're just dumped into. It looks like AT&T has some exclusives here. Jeez. That's the problem. You install a lot of this bloat, and the minute the phone comes out of the... That's fine. The minute the phone comes out of the box, it's got to check... You, all these bloat apps have to check and see if they're the latest version and stuff. That happens with the Google apps, of, of course. That happens with all apps that are native, but um, the more apps you preload... <laughs> The more it just, the, the more of a hassle the initial setup becomes. But anyway, being a little tough on AT&T here, I understand that uh, that this happens with all carriers. But interesting to see that the experience is. Um, thank you, LG. Interesting to see that the experience is is roughly comparable. And there we are, folks, showing the notification shades this time around. Uh, these shouldn't be identical because these have all been customized somewhat differently, but AT&T, Verizon Wireless, and the global device. This is the one that I've had for about a day, so I've really customized that, but we can see Verizon has taken it upon itself to customize this notification shade a bit. Maybe it, too, was tired of a lot of the clutter. I have a bit more clutter on the global one here. AT&T one looks a little bit standard, but they all three have working Wi-Fi toggles. Should not be something that we need to necessarily celebrate, but uh, we are, because that's unusual, especially when Verizon is in the mix. So kudos to Verizon, and just so that you can see all three in the same frame one more time before we close it out, there they are. Once again, AT&T Verizon Wireless Global Unlocked Variant. But wait, as they say, there's more. Specifically, one more thing beyond the quick start guide. Will we find... A USB adapter? Probably. A USB cable? Most definitely. Headphones? Let's see. There's our USB. There's our power adapter. Oh. Well, we got a SIM key, so at least there's that. And as I mentioned, folks, we are still in our review period on the LG G2. The carrier variants will be helping us in comparisons. We may not do a full review on each device, but we will definitely have a full review of the G2 up very soon. Stay tuned for that and subscribe on YouTube so you don't miss it. Follow us on social media so you don't miss other content from Pocket Now. And be sure and toss us a like if you enjoyed the video and leave a comment down below if you have something to say. Until next time, once again, this has been Michael Fisher with Pocket Now. Thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.